I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another episode of Indie Lab, where we put the science in your hands. And this time, the science is at your fingertips. Some people have been impressed with the idea that there's never been any two snowflakes that are exactly alike, and I never quite got that. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty cool that nature never seems to ever repeat herself with frozen water. I just don't see why snowflakes get all of the credit. When I stop and think about it, I can't think of any two things that are exactly identical. From grains of sand to stars in our galaxy, no two of anything are ever going to be exactly alike. Hey, even two copper atoms are still going to have different temperatures, positions, and quantum states. It's a very important skill of a scientist, in fact, to be able to observe the similarities and differences that two things can have. And something really awesome to observe the differences of is right at your fingertips. Literally. Your fingerprints. Every fingerprint is different in some way. Even identical twins don't have the same fingerprints. Dactyloscopy and dactylography are two different words that mean essentially the same thing. It's the study of the examination of fingerprints and their differences. And another word to bring up here is dermatoglyphics, the scientific study of anything and everything to do with fingerprints, including how they develop on a human and how they may change slightly over time, and also why different types exist. Well, in today's Indie Labs, we're going to do some dactylography, and we're going to show you how easy it can be to find some fingerprints around your house and even figure out who's been reading your diary. Does anybody still do that? Call it a diary? All you're going to need for this is a number two pencil, some note cards, and some tape. When it comes to the tape, make sure it's the clear, shiny stuff, not the frosted kind. That's going to be the equipment that we use to develop our fingerprint catalog. As for finding fingerprints around the house, you're going to want a makeup brush and some baby powder. And then you need a clear plastic surface. A lot of options exist for this, but for me, I have these protective card holders kind of lying around. But also, the glass or plastic from like a picture frame could work pretty nicely for this too. Okay, let's collect some fingerprints. First, we want to learn about different fingerprints. And the best way to start out your catalog is by taking your own fingerprints. To do this, get a note card and then start covering it with a good portion of graphite from your pencil. Get a nice area colored in, pretty dark. Next, rub one of your fingers along the graphite that you've put on that note card. Get the graphite all over your prints. Once it's good and covered, carefully take a piece of tape, make sure not to touch the sticky side with another finger, and place the sticky side on your finger that now has the graphite on it. Carefully take off the tape, and then place this onto a fresh note card. You should be able to see your fingerprint pretty clearly. And then either on that side of the note card or on the back side, write down who this was, which hand, and which finger. You can do this with all of your fingers and catalog each one. And you can ask family members, friends, if they'll also provide you some fingerprints for your analysis. And if they aren't willing to provide you with their fingerprints, look them right in the eye with an eyebrow raised and ask, why not? Now that we have a collection of fingerprints, let's learn a little bit about what types are out there and what you might have. Most who study fingerprints classify them into three main categories, loops, whirls, and arches. And these three categories have their own subcategories too. Looking at loops, these are the most common, and about 60% of all fingerprints that are out there are a type of loop. And this category, loops, has three subcategories, radial loops, ulnar loops, and double loops. You see, in your forearm, you've got two bones here, the radius and the ulna. That means that the radius is your thumb side, and the ulna is the pinky side. Well, if the trails of the loop, if they start on the radial thumb side, then that's considered to be a radial loop. And if the trail ends of the loop start on the ulna side, the pinky side, then that's considered an ulnar loop. And a double loop, just like it sounds, has two loops present. There's a little bit of gray area here too, because depending upon how those double loops look, they might be starting to swirl, and thus, some people call those a type of whirl. Let's look at that category next. Whirls make up about 30 to 35% of the fingerprints that are out there. And just like it sounds, they have a circular spiraling pattern to them. They can be plain whirls, or they can be pocket whirls. And some further analysis can even go in there as to which way the whirl is going, clockwise or counterclockwise which will be described as either radial or ulnar, again, depending upon which hand it came from. And 
And then there's a third category of worlds called either accidental worlds or irregular worlds, depending upon who you talk to. And these worlds just don't fit nicely into either of the other two categories. Last category, if you have an arch, well then you've got a somewhat rare fingerprint. Arches make up only about 5% of the fingerprints out there. And there can be two types. A plain arch looks like a pretty mild water wave. All the lines start on one side of the finger and trail to the other side of the finger, sloping up a little bit mildly in the center. The other type of arch is a tented arch. And this is similar to the other arch pattern, except there's a much steeper rise in the arch. If you think of plain arches as being just a gentle sloping hill, then a tented arch is kind of more like a mountain peak. So upon analysis, hey, check out some of my prints here. Turns out I've got plenty of loops. However, all of my loops were ulnar. None of them were radial. I've got a couple of worlds too. And I've even got one of those rare 5% arches. But hey, since we come with 10 fingers, one out of every two people should have at least one arch statistically. So there you go. Analyze your fingerprints now and try to get some practice as to identifying what the different categories are and noticing how they're similar and different. But now, let's have some fun. Are you ready to join the Indie Labs crime scene investigation team? Let's do an experiment. Get a family member or friend who's allowed you to catalog their fingerprints. Then, without them telling you which finger they're using, get them to touch a nice smooth surface, something like a plate or a glass. For our demonstration, I'm gonna use this blue plate. Once they've touched the surface, it's time to go collect their print. Let's do it. Put a little bit of baby powder onto a separate plate. You don't need that much at all. And then with your makeup brush, collect a little bit of it and gently sprinkle above where you think a fingerprint might be some of that powder. Once the surface is a little bit covered everywhere with baby powder, very gently brush it back and forth until you start to see where a fingerprint might be. It'll look like a place where the baby powder is getting a bit smudged. And especially if they only touched it in one place, it'll pop right out at you. You should even be able to see some of the prints in the baby powder now. Very gently brush the rest of the powder from around the fingerprint away from the print. Once you can somewhat clearly see where the print is, take a longer piece of tape, about two or three inches, and gently place this sticky side onto the fingerprint. You want to press the tape onto the fingerprint, but you don't want to smear any of the baby powder. So run a finger along the tape, always going in the same direction. Then, ever so carefully, remove the tape, lift it off of the surface. Once you've pulled the tape off, you want to immediately transfer it onto that plastic surface we talked about. For me, it's the card holder. And the reason why we use this longer piece of tape is that way we had plenty of places to hold it that wouldn't interfere with the fingerprint. And now to examine the print that you collected. The reason why we used a plastic see-through card holder for this, or something similar, is that now you can take it and hold it up to the light, but do so with a dark background behind it. Shining the light on the surface with a dark background behind it, you should be able to see pretty clearly what the fingerprint is. Now, it won't be collected perfectly. Compared to the graphite prints we collected before, this is going to look a little bit harder to distinguish. But hey, that's what real crime scene investigators have to deal with all the time. Even if not all of the information of the print is there, that doesn't mean that we can't actually make a determination. Now you can just visually analyze this and compare it to the note cards you've collected, but also it might be a little bit more helpful to snap a photo of this with like a phone camera or some similar device. Now compare it to your catalog and see if you can determine which finger that friend or family member touched the surface with. Now I'm not saying that this method's gonna hold up in a court of law, but still, this is a great way to have some CSI fun and learn a lot about patterns and recognizing their similarities and differences. Hey, if you had fun with this lab, then leave your thumbs up fingerprint, hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe for some more upcoming Indie Lab science experiments. See what cool science lab we got coming up next. I'm Rich Lund, and I'll see you next time. Socially not perceived, don't mean it can't be I can find love in each cause respect for one another Don't check